Well, we have an update on the uh, leaked Florida travel ban, which, you know, uh, it seems like, as I said a couple days ago, a trial balloon. Or was it yesterday? I can't remember. It might have just been yesterday. Um, but uh, we essentially, I think we have confirmation from the Biden administration that, yes, they did implant that story um, in uh, uh, McClatchy. Um, so I guess we'll start there. Jen Psaki was asked about the travel ban proposal thing, and she essentially had the same response that the uh, unnamed administration official had in the McClatchy article, which was that, well, we're not, we have nothing planned right now and nothing's been approved, but, you know, we always keep all options on the table because, you know, this is a battle and we got to win the battle. And, you know, she repeated the, the thing verbatim. She, she said the same thing that the people who planted that story in McClatchy said. And so if she's saying, you know, if she's regurgitating the same thing, that's her way of saying, yes, that's absolutely what we're talking about. Yes, we did plant that trial balloon. No, that was not fake news. Um, and, you know, that's pretty scary. And somebody pointed out yesterday uh, that this is actually um, uh, fulfilling a, uh, a prediction that Jeff Deist of the, you know, president of the Mises Institute made, um, you know, a few months ago, which is that eventually what we're going to start seeing is... Um, sort of a reconstruction uh, level um, oppression of red states by the federal government. And that, you know, because the, the mentality of uh, the left, um, you know, towards, you know, the Trump years is that they sort of look at it like, you know, like the Civil War and that they think of this as, you know, we're in our reconstruction era now and they have to reconstruct these red states that, you know, uh, went rogue and voted for the evil Donald Trump. And Florida, I think, would be chief among them. Um, you know, culturally, Florida just sort of reeks of of sort of the kind of, you know, the Florida Republicans are sort of the closest to the, uh, you know, the, the Trumpian sort of attitude, you know, being very uh, uncouth. And of course, Trump lives here and the governor here is a very pro-Trump guy. We've been very open with the economy, um, all things I've detailed in the past. And so that would make um, Florida, a, you know, the prime candidate, and of course Florida being the, one of the biggest and most, you know, economically prosperous states uh, that happens to fall into the enemy state category, um, that makes us prime targets for reconstruction. And I guess the fact that the Biden administration is not totally shooting this down, that Jen Psaki didn't come out and flatly deny this, uh, signifies that um, they don't feel that their trial balloon has been uh, sufficiently shot down. Um, I, they, they didn't uh, ratchet things up, but they certainly doubled down on what they've already said, which was quite tepid to begin with. Um, it wasn't a very strong commitment. You know, maybe they're just, you know, maybe it's still just a threat. Maybe they just want people to think that they're thinking about it and they actually aren't thinking about it. Um, I'm not sure yet, but I mean, this certainly is not off the table now. It's on the table. That's what Jen Psaki made clear. Um, you know, she said, hey, we've got no specific, I don't, she essentially said, I'm not making any specific threats, uh, but you know, yeah, that's that's a possibility. Now, today in uh, Port Charlotte, uh, I guess um, the the governor is on sort of a tour, um, going through these uh, these vaccination sites. I think he was in Venice yesterday, and Port Charlotte's just south of there, so maybe he's going around to a bunch of <clears throat> vaccination sites or something. Uh, but anyway, it doesn't matter why he was there. He made uh, he he was asked about this, and um, he was uh, you know as I had hoped. Seemed very defiant. He was not cowering at this. He was not going, "Oh, gee, that wouldn't be too good if the feds did that to us." And, you know, he flat out said, "Hey, <laughs> that's that's legal. The government can't, you know, uh, the federal government cannot impede uh, interstate travel." I mean, that's a very basic, um, you know, tenant of uh, you know the, the of the union is that these states we have freedom of movement amongst the states. And so, uh, you know, DeSantis sort of made it clear that he is committed uh, to ensuring, to maintaining freedom of movement. Um, and that, uh, you know, if Biden says, oh, people in Florida, they got to stay quarantined in here, you know, um, DeSantis is not going to help Biden build the wall. In other words, the Florida Highway Patrol is not going to shut down the interstate. Uh, they are not going to uh, seal off I-75, I-95, and I-10 let alone all of the other smaller roads that cross uh, the border with, you know, Alabama and Georgia. And so I guess that means that, you know, the federal government would have to rely on, uh, you know, the state of Georgia's, you know, the states of Georgia and Alabama to enforce this, 
you know, this embargo if they wanted to do it. Uh, I guess the federal government could shut down airports because those are controlled by the feds. Um, so I guess that's a pretty serious, um, that would be pretty serious if they shut down flights. Um, I, the, you know, the FAA can do that if they want to. Um, again, I, I don't think it's constitutional, but I guess, you know, the, the Biden administration would just, you know, make the case, oh, you don't have a constitutional right to get on an air airplane. I think that uh, that last word might have got cut off there. And so I do think that, you know, you would still be able to get out, even if the Biden administration went through with this, you know, you'd still be able to drive out of here. But uh, obviously that would be a huge impediment if flights, uh, all incoming flights or and outgoing flights, I guess all flights, um, you know, to and from Florida were shut down. That would, you know, impede a lot of travel. In fact, you know, it would make our highways even more congested than they already are. Um, you know, I-95 is already a death trap uh, under normal circumstances. But I mean, you shut down flights and that's even worse and then think about all the people coming from other countries flying into uh the you know the um florida you know to be here uh, i guess the people who want to go um you know the people from latin america visiting family in miami would have to fly into atlanta and then drive all the way down in fact my uh, my father made a pretty interesting joke i was discussing this with him and some other people today um, he said, you know, I guess if Biden, you know, embargoes us, we should just build a bridge to Cuba, um, you know, and, and join us up so that we'll be, you know, we'll be stronger since the Cubans are embargoed too. You know, we'd be embargo buddies and, uh, you know, we can at least trade back and forth with each other. Kind of like how, you know, Cuba and all the other pariah states uh, like North Korea that, you know, the United States, you know, doesn't like have traded in the past. I guess Iraq in the 90s, uh, Cuba tried to trade with, you know. Of course, the problem there is Cuba doesn't have much to trade. I guess cigars, we could get Cuban cigars again. That wouldn't be too bad, though I don't personally smoke. Now, um, I, I guess I should finally get to what I put in the thumbnail. I can't resist. I already know what I'm going to put in the thumbnail. I normally make the thumbnails after the video, and I still will. Uh, but there is this story that I think, I'm pretty sure, is, is, is fake news. Um, about a conference call between DeSantis and Fauci and Biden and presumably other people on their staff um, talking about this, where you know DeSantis confronts Biden over it, and you know and Biden comes out you know straightforward and says you know hey we might have to do this until the CDC says you know that you're okay because uh, there's the new strain from South Africa and the UK that's you know growing in in Florida and we need to make sure that it's contained and all this and blah, blah, blah. And DeSantis says, you know, oh, that would be, well, some, actually, DeSantis said something kind of similar to what he said today. He said, uh, you know, that would be illegal and uh, wrong, and uh, I will mobilize the National Guard to protect freedom of movement. And then, you know, Biden, uh, you know, claps back with whatever his statement was, and, and you know, like Fauci is in there, you know, a, a bit. And, and then eventually we get to this point to where uh, DeSantis refers to Biden as Joe, and Joe gets mad and he says, you call me Mr. President or President Biden. And DeSantis says, go after yourself and hangs up. Um, I think this is total fan fiction. Um, this is from a site that I haven't heard of before. It's called Real Raw News. Um, and I, I really don't doubt that this happened, though I wish it did. Uh, it would be really exciting if that, if that really, you know, I'd be proud of DeSantis. Um, although I don't think that either Biden or DeSantis would have gotten to that point. It just sounds too good to be true, especially the part about mobilizing the National Guard to protect freedom of movement. I mean, that sounds like, to me, it sounds like Fort Sumter. Um, and, uh, you know, it, and that would make me happy because I mean, oh, Florida's going to secede. Hooray. Uh, you know, we, we uh, I think we'd be much better off as an independent country. I'd much rather have, you know, DeSantis as the president of the Free Republic of Florida um, than to have uh, Biden or any of these other clowns at the federal level. But even though... Um, the, the exact details of this story, I think, are fictitious. Um, it's not, you know, it's not really wrong in spirit. I don't think that it get, you know, I think that the reason why people, why you're, you would be able to believe this is because uh, it kind of does reflect, um, it, you know, I mean, it reflects how DeSantis talked today at the press conference. You know, you can imagine that things could get pretty heated in a private, you know, conference call with uh, Biden and Fauci. But, you know, who knows? Until they release uh, tape of this conference call, which I'm sure if this if this happened, a tape exists, uh, I am not going to believe this. Although I have to say, I, I got some amusement out of the political article I was reading today, which was a write-up of DeSantis' comments down in Port Charlotte. And 
they well, there was one line in there about how you know this comes you know as a, a you know as just a, a series of escalations and tension between uh, Florida and the federal government. I just think, oh, how great it is that there are tensions between Florida and the federal government. I mean, it sounds like a like a foreign policy article where they're talking about, oh, this is a, a, a you know a series of an escalation of tensions between uh, between the United States and uh, Iran. Not that I want to compare Florida to Iran, but I just mean as far as being enemies of Washington. Um, I would. I'm, I'm very happy that uh, you know there is a, a you know escalating tensions between uh, my state's government and Washington. And so I guess this story is not over. This is going to continue to develop. This is not just a one-off thing that was leaked by McClatchy. It seems like this is going to be a broader thing because you know what DeSantis did today was you know he was he ratcheted things up a bit. You know he called their bluff. He said you know go ahead try uh, make my day. <laughs> is what he told Uncle Joe. And um, if they do, you know, again, if this happens, it would happen with the FAA suspending flights. That's what would happen. Because um, you don't have the power of the federal government to uh, shut down the highways. I guess you could, I guess uh, Biden could try and, you know, federalize the National Guard, uh, which, you know, and use them to block the highways and all the roads. That would be the only way that I could imagine doing this. But again, at that point, then you have a conflict. You're going to have the governor of Florida, uh, who normally commands the Florida National Guard, saying, "Hey, <laughs> don't you're not don't do this. You're not going to block our highways and seal off our state. You know, you'd be traitors," um, which I think they would be. Uh, any National Guardsman who tries to, uh, you know, lock me into a prison uh, is, you know, not is not somebody who guards my safety. Um, you know, that's just a paid hack for the for the White House at that point. Um, and so you'd have a conflict at that point between um, uh, the White House and uh, Tallahassee. And I don't think that they that anybody at this stage that people are going to try and go that far. So it probably would just be the flights, meaning that uh, it would be an inconvenience to Florida. Now, maybe later on, um, <laughs> they would try and escalate that more. And, uh, you know, the president would try and order the, the National Guard uh, to uh, to close our borders, uh, to close all the, all the roads, um, and if that didn't work, if DeSantis persuaded them to you know disobey Biden, then Biden would try and of course you know nationalize the Alabama and Georgia National Guard, where I think he would also be unsuccessful. Um, I don't think that uh, the uh, the people of Alabama or Georgia would be too satisfied with their governors if they uh, allowed them to seal off uh, you know Florida like that. But of course, if the feds really did manage to seal off Florida, well, what does that mean? That means they're creating a hard border between Florida and the rest of the United States. I mean, what does that mean? That means we're the, you know, de facto an independent country at that point. Um, you know, we have our own borders. That's, you know, if you don't have, as, as Trump likes to say, if you don't have borders, you don't have a country. Well, what's the inverse of that? If you do have borders, you do have a country. And so at that point, if, uh, you know, if people here are locked in by the feds and we can't leave, you think anyone here is going to have much respect for the federal government and their laws and things and whatever executive orders uh, the president hands down from up on high? No. And neither will the, 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 you know, the state government. So I think if, you know, if Biden really did go through with this, uh, it would just totally, um, uh, you know, destroy uh, any power that the federal government has left here. I mean, I, I'm giddy with excitement at this thought. I mean, I never would have thought that, you know, until a couple of days ago in this leak that, I mean, that Biden would consider something like this. It's just, you know, it, again, it seems like something that you would get out of a, out of like a Civil War 2.0 fan fiction. Not that I want Civil War, I mean, that'd be horrible. Um, but thankfully, I don't think that anybody, um, <clears throat> I don't think that there's strong enough desires for there to be any sort of real military conflict uh, between uh, parts of the United States. I really, I think again, may, maybe this is just me being too optimistic, but I really do think that things would just result in peaceful disassociation. I think that, you know, we have these political arrangements in um, in the United States between the states and the federal government and all the local governments and everything because people go along with them. And as soon as people say, you know what, this doesn't work out for us anymore, and they just say no, I think that those, um, I think that those uh, systems um, break down. I mean, there's no appetite in this country for blood in the streets, for, you know, uh, um, the army to just march in and start slaughtering people in Florida because uh, we don't wear enough masks, because we don't wear two masks. <laughs> and of course, if they did, I mean, the federal government would lose, would totally lose all credibility. I mean, you can't do that. 
governments can't just go around slaughtering people, um, at least not in the West. Um, you know, maybe in the East because the mainstream media will tolerate it if it's a U.S. ally. You know, some governments can get away with slaughtering their people, but um, you know, you can't do that and be it like a, a even a semi-democratic system. You can't maintain legitimacy by slaughtering people unless your legitimacy is, hey, people are afraid of us, so they won't rise up against us. But at that point, you have no democratic legitimacy. So I, I think I've gone on uh, about this whole episode um, enough. Uh, and so with that said, if you get anything of value out of this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and sharing this video. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe because I do upload every day and I hate to have you miss one. So I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.